and welcome to today's lesson, Word Problems, Multiplying and Dividing Integers. In our last video, we looked at the BEST method, where we box our keywords and numbers, eliminate unnecessary information, strategize, and find the total and restate. We'll be using that method for multiplying and dividing. So let's get started. The temperature dropped 6 degrees total in 3 days. What was the average change in temperature each day? I'll first start out by boxing any keywords or numbers. So I notice that it's dropped 6 degrees total in 3 days. And average change. I know that average change in a word problem means division. So I know I'm going to be dividing here. Next, I'll eliminate any unnecessary information. Here, I don't happen to have any, so I'm going to skip that step. The next part is to strategize. For this particular problem, I'm going to use a number line. And remember, you can use draw a picture, make a table, uh, work backwards, any of those strategies for each problem. But I like using a number line for this. So here I have a number line where I'm at negative 6 and I want to go towards 0. And I want to go towards zero in three days. So I have one, two, three arrows. These represent my days. How much is in between each arrow on the number line? That distance is going to represent my answer for the temperature change from each day. So let's find our total and restate. Right here I've essentially drawn a number line that shows division. So I have negative six divided by three, which is going to give me negative two. Then I restate. The average change in temperature is negative 2 degrees. Let's look at another example. A river is currently at 10 feet below sea level. If the water level dropped 2 feet per hour for 7 hours, what did the water level start at? Remember our first step is to box any keywords and numbers. So here I have 10 feet below sea level, dropped 2 feet per hour for 7 hours, and start at. The start at is going to tell me which strategy to use. I would then eliminate any unnecessary information, which I don't happen to have any in this problem either. Next, I'm going to strategize. Because I want to know where I started at and I know where I ended at, the best strategy for this is to work backwards. So I will draw out my box, which represents where I started. I'll draw what happened next, so it says it dropped 2 feet per hour for 7 hours. So here's the 2 feet that it dropped for 7 hours, and I ended up with negative 10. So, to get the answer, I'm taking my negative 10 and I'm going to add what it dropped. Because if I had my starting point and it dropped and gave me negative 10, if I'm at my ending point, I would rise to get back to the start. So my total here would be negative 10 plus 14, notice that I just combined the 7 and the 2 by multiplying, is equal to 4. So now I'll restate. It asked, what did the water level start at? The water level started at 4 feet above sea level. In our next example, this situation deals with a game. So in a game, 5 dice are rolled. For each even die, you get 2 points. For each odd die, you lose three points. Ella rolled and got one even and four odd. How many points did she get? So first I'll box my keywords and numbers. So I know for even die, you get two points. For odd, you get lose three points. She got one even and four odd. Next I'll eliminate any unnecessary information. I don't need to know that five dice are rolled. I can see that she ended up with one even and four odd, so that five might confuse me when I'm working through the problem. Next, I'll strategize. And because I have a lot of different things going on here, I'm going to use a table. When I create my table, I'm just going to label it with up and down. So what's happening with my points? So I got one even, so that means that I went up two because it said for each even die, you get two points. Then. I got four odd. Each odd is worth minus three points. So I had minus three, minus three, minus three, and minus three. 
This takes us to our total and restate. So here I had two and I had four sets of negative three. So that's two minus 12. And I ended up with negative 10. So how many points did she get? Ella has a total of negative 10 points. In my last example, Jeff is trying to find out how many questions he got wrong in a trivia game. His score is negative 48, and each wrong question is worth negative six points. How many questions did Jeff get wrong? First, we'll box our keywords and numbers. So he has a score of negative 48, and wrong questions are worth negative six. How many questions did he get wrong? This automatically tells me that he can not be a negative answer because we can't have negative questions. Next, I'll eliminate any unnecessary information, which I don't have here, and then I'll strategize. I could use several different strategies for this one. Number line, um, I could also work backwards. For this one, I'm just gonna use a picture though. So I'm gonna represent all of the questions that he got wrong by starting with negative six and working my way up to negative 48. So each of my tiles represents negative six. So after four tiles, I know that that's 24. So I would keep going until I ended up with eight tiles. And I know eight times negative six is negative 48. My total and restate here, negative 48 divided by negative six is eight. Remember, it said how many questions did Jeff get wrong? Jeff got eight questions wrong, and that makes sense because my answer should have been a positive. Let's recap. When I use the best method, I'm going to box keywords and information, I'm sorry, keywords and numbers, eliminate unnecessary information, strategize, total and restate. And I also learned in this lesson that average change means division. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe for this and other lessons. Until next time.